few years ago, as a practicing pediatrician in Newark, New Jersey, I had a patient who came to me from the war-torn West African country of Liberia. She spoke English with a heavy accent, and she didn't understand the US educational or health system, and so she had difficulty knowing how to advocate for herself or her children. Her clinic visits were always a trip, as the team did our best to support her. I remember like it was yesterday when I had to walk into the room and tell her that I was relocating to another city. She bent her head, closed her eyes, shook her head, and then she looked at me and said, who is going to understand me now? I was her doctor, but she was asking about something else. She was saying, not about my clinical training or expertise. What she was going to miss was me, my whole self. Where was she going to find somebody who looked like me, sounded like me, had the experiences I had, and would use those experiences to understand and help her? You see, I too was born in a war in West Africa, albeit a different country, Nigeria. I didn't speak her tribal language, but I understood her broken English. Bringing my whole self to the table enabled me to serve her as she needed. The trouble is that systems default to uniformity and conformity. There's a mental model of what a team member should look like, and people who don't fit that model struggle to be accepted and included. The way we change this begins by seeing value in other people's stories. And the first step is to understand that the most important thing you bring into service is yourself, your expertise, your perspective, your journey, your whole self. When we can understand and value our own whole stories, then we can understand and value our patients. The pandemic threw a spotlight on serious inequities that are suffered by some populations. Black, Hispanic, and indigenous Americans, for example, suffered a three to four times higher rate of infection and death from COVID. The drivers of these disparities weave a complex story, including issues like cultural awareness, trust, access, and other social and political drivers, a legacy of decades of historic structural racism. As we've worked to understand and correct these inequities, Research has shown us that diversifying our clinical teams is an evidence-based way to achieve and improve health equity. But healthcare systems have worked for decades to promote standardization of care and reduce variability. This has been great to develop high quality care, but it asks us to treat patients equally and not necessarily equitably Equal care, in which every patient gets the same care plan, has really been the gold standard. In fact, it's the first thing I hear from physicians when I talk to them about health equity. I treat everyone the same, they'll say to me. Equitable care, however, understands that patients are all starting from different places. And so you have to give each patient what they need to achieve optimal health. When you have a team that is very different from the patients we serve, it can allow our biases to come to the fore. I remember as a pediatrician, I would often say to the young doctors, you can't love that baby more than his mama does. It was my way of telling them to check their biases, which suggested to them that they knew better than the mother how to love and care for her child. I would remind them that our patients are individuals with their own stories, their own histories, their own experience of health and understanding of their needs. And it was our responsibility to meet them at a place where we could communicate effectively. Giving them the care that they deserved required understanding their individuality as well as the symptoms that they presented. I've had to educate myself on historical policies such as redlining, which contribute to healthcare disparities. What I can tell you though, from over two decades of practicing clinical medicine, is just how difficult it is to build and sustain a diverse clinical team. It starts as far back as middle school, when non-majority students are severely underrepresented 
in science, technology, engineering, and math STEM classes. It continues through high school, medical school, college, residency, and all of their careers. I have had the opportunity over the years to mentor and support many minority physicians who find themselves isolated and targeted, othered and made to feel not a part of their team. The narrative is depressingly similar, whether I've heard it on the East Coast, the West Coast, or in the middle of the country. What's up with your hair? You mean the way it grows out of my head? Why don't you smile more? At what? You're so aggressive. You seem angry. You're not a team player. These statements are dropped in their laps, often with no explanation, no examples or context. And gradually, they weave themselves into a more insidious narrative, leaving these doctors perplexed and distressed. Am I supposed to be smiling all the time? Should my hair look like yours, even though it pops out of my head differently? What am I to do? And often, they will start trying to minimize themselves, not show up their full self, or they run the risk of having their careers or training cut short. And this happens more often than we're willing to discuss. A recent study by stat.com, funded by the Commonwealth Fund, showed that black residents were kicked out of training programs at a far higher rate than their white counterparts. So the anxiety is real. All these factors result in a healthcare system in which diversity is severely underrepresented. Those who do survive then start to blunt aspects of themselves in an effort not to stick out. Unfortunately, this is the very thing that stops us from connecting with the people who need us the most, and it's a great disservice to all concerned. I learned a great word from a South African friend of mine, a Zulu word. The word is ukuzilanda. I love that pronunciation. It means go and fetch yourself, including your past to inform the present and the future. I love that concept because it brings this problem into focus and gives us a way to address it on an individual basis. Bringing your whole self into the interaction opens the door for a more trust-based relationship. The task of fully understanding our patients begins with fully understanding ourselves so that we know that we can bring our whole selves just as we are, so that we can serve our patients just as they are. When a doctor takes their own story and journey out of the equation, it removes from the system the very thing it needs most, the human dimension at the core of health equity. The great impact of our diverse backgrounds and lived experience is to close what has been described as an empathy gap in healthcare, which is when a majority system does not see the unique humanity of people who are different. And having a diverse team helps us to mitigate that. But that's not gonna happen by default. A rising tide is not going to raise all boats in this case because the factors that create the disparities are so deeply rooted. We must be intentional about elevating and celebrating our differences. The ways that we're different are the ways that we support a diverse world. Note that there does not have to be an exact match between the diversity of your clinical team and the diversity of your patients. We know that when it's an exact match is optimal, but you actually get the benefit even if the match is not exact. The key is that as you advance diversity in your team, you increase cultural humility in the whole as they get to see and respect different perspectives because they get to experience it in people who they already like and trust. I'd like to share with you the story of my boss and mentor from early in my career, Dr. Kendall Sprott. He's a man who fully embodied what it means to bring your whole authentic self into service. An African-American man from Bowman, Texas, his father and two uncles were physicians. 
and they ran the hospital in their hometown, Sprout Hospital, which was designated for the care of African-American patients and which employed African-American doctors and nurses. So he grew up knowing firsthand the value of having a clinical team that shared background and lived experience with the patients that they serve. He makes a difference to how you interact with your patients and a difference to the outcomes. And so he was always intentional about celebrating unique aspects of our lives and those of our patients and fostering connections. He would often say, this patient over here has this background or interest in common with you. You should talk to them. You'd make a great physician for them. It sounds simple, but for these patients, it wasn't the norm. And in so doing, he built a workforce that was uniquely connected to the patients that we served. He also was intentional about advancing clinical leadership that was as diverse as our patient population, with the understanding that such representative leadership would advance policies that are culturally impactful to our community. When it came time for him to move on, he charged the search committee who was looking for his replacement to try to find an African-American leader because for this 98% African-American population that we serve, the ability to see and interact with a physician who looked like them was every bit as important an intervention as any medical diagnosis or treatment. So here is my ask of you. To anyone out there who's hesitant to pursue a career or serve in any space because you think you might not be a fit, your voice and your story are desperately needed, especially in healthcare. As we work to build a more equitable society, let us be intentional about developing and celebrating the beautiful melting pot of our diverse stories. Recruit and advance diversity in your team. Make a point to support them with mentors, sponsors, coaches, fostering a culture of inclusivity and belonging. The world our community and our patients need our differences, so embrace it. Step into that space. Bring your whole story. There's someone out there waiting for you to answer the question, who is going to understand me now? Thank you.